So it's back to business for everybody, Wall Street, Main Street, realtors, the whole shebang. So I know you're looking at a Freddie Mac report that shows that uh, mortgage rates from the 30 year actually dipped just a few ticks below 7%. I do want to bring up, we usually follow Mortgage News Daily here. It shows it well over 7%, but either way, still easing a bit. Just give us a snapshot of what's going on in the mortgage market right now, or the housing market, I should say. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the fact that the last few weeks we've seen the 30 year dip down is a good sign. But as you know, the real estate market is cyclical, so it could dip back up again. And so it's hard to say. The challenge really, Frank, has been this sort of artificial constraint on inventory because so many sellers have locked in a 2 and 3 percent rate, and they've been unwilling uh, to let go of that, which makes sense. And so uh, I don't see anytime soon inventory uh, becoming you know, flush where we need it to be because sellers are unwilling to put their homes on the market as much as we need to. And so because of tight inventory rates, even though they've come down a little bit, uh, still has not created enough intersection between supply and demand. Okay. And that's why we've seen a slower housing market. So, Bess, explain this to me. So the median selling price in April, it was up 6% year over year. Now, some of that is obviously the low inventory, but the rates, they still remain very high. I thought the idea was that prices would actually go down. Why are they still up? Be part of that is because, think about it, if there's still decent demand and there's not enough inventory, that's going to keep prices higher. But where's One this demand coming from? The consumer's stretched. I mean, where's this demand coming from? Where are people getting the money for these bidding wars and other things that are apparently pushing prices up higher? I mean, there still is a real commitment uh, to buy housing. I mean, I think people... Uh, it's a commitment to economic security, and it's truly the queen of the asset classes. And so when people do have a little bit of savings, uh, they do want to buy a home, even if it's a first-time home. And so rates are still historically low. We have to get that in context. It's not like they're in the double digits. You know, 6 and 7 percent is still historically low. And so for a lot of people, they are willing to stretch to be able to buy their first time home. Something like 50 million people in America are between the ages of 30 and 40. And right. those are a lot of our first time uh, home buyers today. You know, really good point. If, I think anybody talks to your parents, your grandparents, they always talk about those double digit uh, mortgage rates that they right. bought their first home with. It's a different environment now, just in all fairness. Um, one other thing I want to talk to you about, and we talked to you about this before, are the new commission rules for real estate agents. Um, how do you see that impact in the market as we go through the rest of the summer and the rest of the year? Is that going to have a meaningful impact? And if so, on who? The buyers or the sellers? I think that that new rule, once it goes into place, which will be at the end of the summer, I think it just creates more transparency for the consumer, which is a good thing, which we're always pushing for. And keep in mind, commissions have always been negotiable and they will continue to be negotiable. So I don't see any major shift with this new rule.